Microphones going, but anyway, <clears throat> does anybody have any additions or deletions to the agenda? No. No. Sir. Okay. I'm gonna make a motion to accept. I'll, I'll make it. I'll second. second. Okay. Clay, Clay, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Committee reports. <clears throat> the Sheriff's Department report. Adam, you want to read that? Yes, sir. St. Francis County Sheriff's Department monthly activity report. Oh, Total calls 237. There were 10 investigations, 17 disturbance calls, five for uh, psychiatric or suicidal, 12 for suspicious activity, 18 for traffic accidents, 31 from dispatch, two for overdose, two, uh, excuse me, 19 well-being calls, uh, three pursuit calls, eight alarms, uh, 50 calls just miscellaneous to the office, and there were 62 different <laughs> other calls. Uh, total arrest, uh, was 10, active warrants 5, possession of controlled substance 1, assault 2, DWI 1, stolen vehicle 1, driving while revoked 1. Total traffic stops 39, trespass was 17, and traffic violations were 17. Um, total mileage put on the cars in one week was 1,500 miles. <laughs> Okay, Deb, you want to do the fire department report? Sure. Uh, Tarotalac Fire Department, uh, October 2021 20, monthly report. We had a total of 18 calls. One was an allergic reaction, three were falls, two were strokes, four were difficulty breathing, one was diabetic problems, uh, two were motor vehicle accidents, one was an animal rescue, one was an unknown problem, one was a landing zone, and there were two assists for fire. The average response time from dispatch to apparatus on scene time is 12 minutes and 29 seconds. And this month they had a total of 97 training hours. So they were doing radio on scene operation training, hose training, individual drivers training, and equipment <coughs> truck checks. Okay, Andy, you want to get a financial report? Sure. Cash in the bank as of uh, October 31st was $936,000 compared to October 31st of last year, which was back a week, uh, of $875,000, this year it's up about $61,000 to the positive. <coughs> okay, Clay, you want to get the public works? Sure, a, a few of them. There's a whole big old list of stuff here. Cleaned and shut down the bathrooms and all the lakes for the winter season. Cleared various road debris on various roads after the big heavy rainfalls we had, plus a lot of other things, gravel and, and uh, intersections and things of that sort. Repaired the electrical outlet on the back side of the Marcel's bathhouse. Had the salt delivered, which is gonna be important here in another two or three months. Repaired multiple utility road cuts. Repaired potholes around the Lake Shane Drive. Cleared multiple culvert pipes from the storm and the runoff again. Trimmed the dead overhang limbs from the roadways and had uh, practice and training with the plow trucks for the route drivers in this, this coming fall. Okay, there are no committee reports that we have this month. And that's all for the reports we have. We need a motion to adjourn. I'll make it. I second. Those in favor? Aye. Now this is our annual meet the candidate meeting. There are two of our candidates. One of them is going to be on Zoom. Two of our candidates are here. And this is, I'm going to go around the room and this will give you guys a chance to 
meet and greet these these folks and ask them any questions you may have or any concerns you may have and give them a chance to introduce themselves. So this time, Jay and Sue, you want to come up here? Oh no, I'm more concerned about Sue. Yeah. Sue, can we leave? Yeah. Go home. Now, Connie, Connie's going to be on Zoom. Sue, do you have Ooh. this where they can? Uh, I need like <coughs> three minutes to get over there. Your pen, lady. Thank you, Sue Boren. I've lived here for 12 years. Um, I have really enjoyed living here. It's a beautiful place and friendly people. And my main goal is to keep Tedelac moving forward. We've had some issues in the in the past, and I think we've been working through those. We need to make sure that we're still moving forward, that we, we don't back paddle here. Um, I think one of my key things that I'm concerned about is we talk about transparency a lot and on a high level we have it but I'm not sure we have it on a detailed level as far as the financials are concerned. Um, I think we need to, when, when decisions are made, we need to explain why we made those decisions and that it was a well thought out thing. I don't want last minute decisions, I, you know, we need to plan ahead and um, we need to maintain them what we have and maybe make improvements in the future and I think the community needs to be involved in when what they think we need in the future. Um, seven people are not enough to actually guide the, the community. We need community input. I think that could be it. Thanks everyone. I'm Jay Glasgow. I'm the uh, paddleboard guy of Lake Carmel. I'm also uh, running for the uh, board, so I appreciate the, uh, uh, the good attendance today. I, uh, I come to these board meetings and generally there's about eight to ten of us uh, at these board meetings, so I agree with Sue. We need, uh, we need solid participation. Uh, before we kind of get into my, you know, my thinking around what I will bring to the board, um, I'm joined by my lovely wife, wife Claire, today. We, uh, we've been on Lake Carmel about two years now. Uh, really enjoyed Teradillac, fell in love with it. We've been coming down here for about 10 years, visiting with uh, friends. It's a great, uh, great community, and I think we can, uh, we can make it better. I'm in the, a little bit about my background. I'm in the commercial real estate industry. I work for one of the big three uh, com global commercial real estate firms, and I help corporate clients figure out what to do with their real estate. Um, both operationally and financially. And what that does gives me a unique perspective to understand how you manage money, uh, managing technology, managing the operations of, of real estate portfolios, and managing those financials in a very detailed manner, um, you know, so you know where all that money's, money's going. I also agree with Sue that transparency is important. I pledge to bring to the board that transparency, that communication, most of you have seen me. I'm very active on social media. I'm on Nextdoor, I'm on Facebook, and others, and try to answer your questions in a, uh, in a professional, meaningful, uh, meaningful manner. Um, I, do, I do think that's uh, important. I have some ideas around how we can improve that from my background in the, uh, in the commercial real estate industry. Um, I, uh, I'm, I have some position papers in the back, so if I miss something, feel free to grab those on the way back. Kind of gives my position on several uh, uh, several things at, at Teradillac here. I also have a bio that gives you more of a background on my uh, 
uh, experience in my family life and uh, <clears throat> excuse me things like uh, things like that. I, uh, I really want to kind of focus on three key things before we open it up for questions. Number one, I am adamant, and you get most of you have seen this on Facebook, to maintain the police force that we have. Having a dedicated TDL police force through St. Francis County is very important. I want to make sure we're maintaining our lakes uh, and the infrastructure here at Terrellac in a manner that really uh, lends itself to, to the healthy wildlife and, and, uh, and fish fish habitat. I know we had some, some issues on Lake Carmel, but the, the, the associations really did a good job this year of kind of um, work, working on that lake. We have several other lakes that we should, uh, we should concern about. I'm excited about what the current board is doing with the road projects. Um, you know, that, that improves all our property values. It just looks great from the river all the way down now to the, uh, to the front entrance. It looks great. And that program will continue, understand my understanding from the board. And that's, that's going to improve all our property values and make it really a uh, robust community. I'd like, I have some pet projects that I'd like to see implemented. Um, I say pet products, but I think we should have a robust kind of a redo the front entrance um, of Terrellac, the, the guardhouse. Um, I know the, the main front entrance with the rocks that were put there in the landscaping is a great start, but even reciting the um, uh, association office. And I think if we, we get the contractors that are here in Terrellac, I've talked to homeowners, talked to over 150 homeowners in the last two weeks, and it's top of mind to everybody. So when you care, come to Terrellac, it's a bit of a wow factor to maintain our community as one of the top lake communities in the state of Missouri. <clears throat> but again, I think if we could, we could round up contractors, property owners, um, and, and just labor and support, I think we could do that work without even dipping into the association budget. And that's the kind of, kind of forward thinking I want to bring to the board and kind of roll up my sleeves and get the Rob Youngs and the Jeremy Turnbows and the Jay Browns and the, um, you know, the Carl Altries of the world to step up, you know, I'll step up my personal money also to make sure we're improving the, uh, the, com the community. And again, as, as uh, Sue, Sue said, transparency, how do we improve communication? How do we make sure, I know somebody had a question tonight um, that they wanted to ask to the board and it wasn't available because this is a meet and greet. How do we have a, an easy portal for you to go to to ask those questions and make sure we're getting back to you in a reasonable time frame with a real answer? I'm gonna make that commitment to help, uh, help affect, that, uh, affect that change. So I'm gonna pause here again. Again, I have some brochures in the back if you wanna know more about where I stand on several positions. Again, as well as a personal bio. bio. I think we're going to open up for questions now. Or uh, I, I did not indicate my bio part of it. Um, I worked in the insurance industry for 35 years, primarily underwriting and compliance and legal analysis. Um, I have good project management skills. I have good communication skills. I'm um, a team builder and um, I have very good analytical skills, so I think those would be helpful on, the, on working on the TDL board. And just for, for, for some folks in the, ba in the back here, I, I missed up real quick. I look at TDL as one community. I see some social media activity where people in different areas are concerned about, concerned about things. I want to look at TDL as one community, and we're helping everybody out not just factions of the community. Let's, let's bring the community together. As Sue said, let's put things that have happened in the past in the past and let's build for the, uh, build for the future. So, thank you. Thank you, guys. And we have one more kind that's going to be on Zoom. I believe we'll be able to hear this is Connie Cathcart. I'm sorry, what? Connie, Connie's on Zoom. Oh. Connie, can you hear us? <laughs> I don't think it's here. Hey, Connie. We can't hear you. Turn your audio. I, I can't. I can't. There you can, go. I can't hear you, Susie. You can't hear us. Not very well. It's like cutting out. I'm in that cell phone lot right now. Okay. I. They can hear you. Can you see? Okay. Great. Can you I guys hear? You? I yeah. can't see any of you very well either. So <laughs> I'm fine here, but hi. Oh, go with it. Oh, you can't hear us. You 
have your uh, few minutes to talk about your background, qualifications, and what you want to talk uh, about. They can all hear you, though. Okay, well, I can't hear you very well. Anyway, I'm Scott Scottgar. I'm running for the board because I believe that the financials have been kind of the weakest link for all of Tierra I think that the board has made some excellent strides in the past, but we all know that the financials need some, some assistance and I can help in that area. I have a bachelor's in accounting and soon I'll be sending out my bio and my qualifications, but I do have the bachelor's in accounting. I have a master's in public administration and I think I can help on that level as far as, you know, getting the accounting in order. So excellent step the board has taken to uh, hire the CPA firm for oversight, but that does not solve our overall problem. For one thing, CPA oversight is not going to deal with our day-to-day -day operations and our financial decision-making on that part, as well as being able to oversee the daily financial operations. They'll be able to correct entries, but we, we have some serious issues in that arena, and I I want to help in that area. I, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I don't know if I'm babbling here, but... They can hear you. Okay, so if you have any questions for me, please, please ask. Yeah, stay on, um, and they're going to ask questions to the three different uh, candidates up okay. here. So once again, I'll be sending out my brochure that will tell specific details of, of what my intentions are and how I think I can help you. And I'm, I'm really sorry I'm not there. We're sitting on the gate for three hours waiting for a cargo net to be repaired. So I really apologize. I, I really wanted to be there. So please accept my apology for for not being there. Okay, I'm gonna start, <clears throat> start this side of the room in the front. I'll give everybody a chance to speak if you could come up and if you have any questions for the candidates, you want to let the masters come up, feel free to do so. But we need to do a sign up sheet because it's a lot easier to keep it orderly this way. This has been done in the past and this has been worked the best. So I'll start right there in the front. Clay, you wanna make a I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Good evening. My name is Carl Vessel. I've been uh, here in Terry Black since 1997. And uh, I've seen things come and go, as they say. But the lady that's on the uh, monitor over there, she said something about some of the financial uh, issues that she wants to address. Can she give us an example of one or two that she is most concerned with? Did you hear that? Can no, I, I can't hear you. Okay, he uh, was asking you specifically because you alluded to the financial issues to name one or two of them. Did I get that correct? Correct. Of the, of the financial Example. problems? Yes. Well, okay. For one thing, I don't think that we have enough subcategories in our reporting. Uh, a lot of them are lumped together. So let's say office supplies, $30,000. Obviously, there's more to it than that. So I'd like to get some subcategories in some of these areas. I also want to make sure that, uh, you know, we get our financials uh, monthly and that they're accurate. So I would say primarily the issue with financial statements not being uh, received by the board or by the public for a full year is definitely an issue. And that can never happen. Like I said, the outsourcing is going to help a little bit, but, you know, CPA <coughs> firms aren't going to go in and, and correct every single entry. They're not going to be able to tell you exactly where your money's being spent. You can't make financial decisions in hindsight when you don't have financial statements for a year. So my goal is to make sure that you see exactly where your money's being spent each and every month, and you can actually look at it and see where it's going instead of it being lumped into one particular category. I think that's very important. 
Okay, I have one other question I would like to address all three of you, then I'll sit down. Uh, this gentleman here stated that he was very much in support of the current Sheriff's Department in Terry Lack. Over the years, from one time to time, I've heard some people became, were just hardened with the previous police department we had. It's basically the same thing, in my opinion, but it's, it's under a different setup of being a sheriff's department, which I think is probably an improvement. Uh, I would like to hear each of your take, but this gentleman said he was already in favor of what we have. I would like to hear the other two ladies address that issue. We need, um, we need a sheriff's department, uh, since we can't have a police department. Um, I just wanna make sure that we're getting the service that we deserve. We've been paying taxes to St. Francis County for years and getting no service at all except on the, on the main roads. I just want to know that we're actually patrolling and that we're taking care of business and that we are, the people that are dedicated to us are giving us what we need. And, um, I know that when we had our police force, I used to see a police car. I'm not out front a lot, but I used to see a police car every day at least once. And I can't say that I see that now. Um, I just want to make sure that we're getting what we deserve as far as the, the service is concerned. Can I address you guys? Isn't it true, though, that we ran into some issues where we couldn't have as a unincorporated community and an actual police force. So this is on our next best alternative. Would that be true or not? I'm sorry, what? Wouldn't the sheriff's department be the only next best alternative since we are not, from what I understood or thought I heard, that we're not legally uh, can have a police department because we're an unincorporated community? I understand that is correct. Um, there may be other solutions out there. I don't know, I've heard talk about security guards or security patrols. I don't know if that's feasible. I don't know if that's desirable. Um, I think the Sheriff's Department can probably do what we need it to do. We just need to make sure that that's really happening. I would just say from personal experience, Carl, I called the, the uh, police line because there was a German Shepherd running loose in our neighborhood three days ago, they were there in four, four minutes. I, 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 I haven't had an issue with them. Bringing security guards in, and the reason I'm bringing this up um, does not give you the protection that you will get from a police department. Having a, a 30 year career and dealing with security officers, they are there, they'll watch, but they can't respond. They have to call the, a, uh, a sheriff's office. We're, the St. Louis, St. Francis County Sheriff's Department is an accredited uh, sheriff's departments, they, the officers get the training, uh, the skill set they need to protect a community like ours. As you can tell, I'm very adamant, I'm very passionate about this because I don't think there's a person in this room that does not want a safe community for your, for your house, for yourself, for your kids. Um, I, think, I think it's something. The other thing I want to bring up, I got my St. Louis, St. Francis County tax bill the other day. I looked at it because I look, I look at um, Look at these in detail. I don't think we're being double dipped. I don't think we're being charged for police service here at Terra Lack. I don't see it as a line item on here that I used to see on my St. Louis County um, tax receipts where it showed a, a line item for police and fire. So I've heard that on social media, we're getting double dipped. I'm not sure that's necessarily the case. Looking at this, I had, uh, had my, uh, uh, one of my accountant friends look at this and look into it. So I think, I, I'm not sure that's the case and what we pay uh, for the budget for the police um, a year. We have about 2,500 residents here in, here in Charitable Act according to the 2020 uh, census. Um, if you take the current budget, that's $104 per residence. That's less than $9 a month for the police force. I think it's well worth it. I think it's something we need to get past. I probably agree more with Sue and Connie that having, having detailed financials is gonna help with that. Talking about changing the police again to security guards, is a topic we probably shouldn't even be discussing. I, I do have a question. Connie, can you, can you hear the question? 
That's 30 I'm not, days. Uh, okay. About the police department? Oh, like, do we need it? Is that what the question was? What her stance is. What your stance is on the police Okay, department. my stance? I obviously think that we need some sort of protection. Now, in my opinion, I think the resident should determine whether or not we have a police department or if they're on for security guards. I believe in letting the population decide what they want as a whole. I don't think that a board should just strictly make that decision since there's seven people compared with, I guess I heard 2,600 residents in here. So my issue is if we stay with the police department or sheriff's department, whatever it is, that's great. But I want to make sure that they don't go over budget. Right now, they're over budget from what I see. And I want to know what we're getting. And I'm sure you do too. So absolutely, we need some sort of law enforcement in our community, as well as we need a fire department and code enforcement, et cetera, et cetera. But I think we need to take a, a look and make sure that we're getting what we're paying for. That's my stance. Okay. Well, anyway. <clears throat> I agree, we want to get as much as we can for our money, but if, if the, like, my understanding is like uh, with uh, guards, they are very limited, as this gentleman has stated, in what they can do. They can watch out for things, but when it comes down to, to solving the issue, once it's identified, they're limited. So. Even if uh, a sheriff's office, and uh, like I say again, you say we're throwing the word police force around, which, and I'll stand corrected if anybody knows for sure that we're not allowed to have a police force, maybe uh, Dwayne can address that because of some legal mumble jumble, which we had for years and it worked, seemed to work well. But to me, the uh, sheriff's department seems in the mix us opportunity just to make sure that we have the coverage that we really need and it's going to be really there all the time thank you thanks carl i do have a question about the mileage 1500 miles in a month no we in a what five days i just started requiring those just to see where they's at and then the first one they gave me was 1500 for five days that was from 10 dollars Oh, five days. Okay, so that's one hundred miles a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna start setting real. I don't know everybody's name here, but set real white sweater next to them. <laughs> well, we're not taking <laughs> questions from her. Anybody got any questions? Let's go with the word like that. Sharon Fiala, I've been here about five years. Love it, absolutely love it. Never loved the place as much as I love this place, so I'm very passionate about it. One of the things that's been a concern to me is communication. We are so fragmented, uh, and the current board, you know, this past year has really tried hard, but it's kind of an uphill battle. We all have full-time jobs. Uh, it's kind of hard to get something going in that nature and get enough volunteers and or money. But organizational wise, what I would love to see, and I'd like your take on it, how to communicate well with the community in general. All this social media stuff is such a time consumer. It's misinformation going all different directions. There should be one place that we all could go to to submit questions, and I think you touched on that. Uh, for any kind of information that we want as a community, we should have one central spot. So what is it that you would envision to accomplish something of that nature? Ladies, want to start? Um, I agree with you. It's, we have so many different sites, it's even hard to tell which one is sanctioned versus the ones that are just created by somebody else, I would, I, my take would be that it would be on our official website and it would be 
a special section for questions and answers or concerns or you know whatever we want to call it and it would be you know how when you're online with a company and it says possibly chat with someone I don't think we can probably do that except during business hours but if at least if the, you, you could pose your question and then it get, comes back to that person personally as, as, at least well I, one of the things I would love to see is a communication slash marketing person <laughs> and I know that's rather ambitious but I mean that would make a lot of sense or at least a site that where we know to go we get a question answered and then that's what everyone looks for we, we stop with all this well and it needs to be if you have the question there's probably 30 other people that probably have the yes question exactly also exactly so it needs to be answered to you personally but also available for other people that's they, that's my whole point because of all these answers and oh I think that what they said was and all what and all of this stuff it's just such a waste of time and it's demoralizing with all the rumors that go around and you know most of the rumors are just that they're just rumors they're not based in fact or someone heard this or that and it causes a lot of angst in a very angst type of period of time that we're in now. So something that could give us good, clear communication. I know that Deb has done a wonderful job. She, it's just been so refreshing to have someone that you can really rely on uh, to get an answer. But and still, clear things up. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Social yeah. media is not the answer for us to get our information. No, I think I think I think it's a com combination of, of of things. I think I think you're right with having a space on a website, having some dedicated email addresses. Maybe it's ask a question at tdlassociation.com and then and then posting it because you go to social media and I've seen Deb's post where she answers a question, then it becomes a 50 answer fight literally on, on, on those sites it's uh, um, because everybody's got everybody's got an opinion but I, I think you're gonna have to have things go to a, a centralized site and then the board and the people in power need to need to answer those questions because you can't just have one person or somebody chiming in I agree with you on social media you got to find what is the real answer and then publish that answer so everybody knows what the what the what the truth is not just one person's opinion on a on social uh, social media. Well, I don't think a email account is going to work. Why not? Something similar. Yeah. It is too cumbersome for people to, to, email? to work with. To, I'm just saying, yeah. in a forum where you've got all people accessing it. I, I, I think we could look at. It's look more at, of a blog type or, or something. Well, that if an email goes to somebody and goes to the association, it's the official site. It funnels down, and and it's probably the board's responsibility and, and the association. To make sure those questions are answered, and I've already made some of a commitment to answer some of those some of those questions um, as they as they come in and help help Deb, so she's not over overburned about it. And then you publish them on, publish them on the uh, on the website, so people can go to the website and get those uh, get those answers, and they could probably probably be part of the board meeting minutes that go out. Here's the questions that were asked this month and answered. Exactly. You probably have ten questions that are really just one question. That is brought up at the board meeting. Uh, every that's month. that's exactly just right. Brainstorming here, right? Right, uh, because if you have it published, you're not having to repeat yourself. Yeah. You know that it is something out there, and then it's you, you always follow. Someone calls. Or ask you. You need to check the website. You need to look. To, I'd love to see it, everything funneled towards one location yeah. because it's so time-consuming for everyone to deal with all of that. We also have to remember that there are a percentage of our population that yes. does not do. You're um, absolutely right. Facebook, Facebook, or email, or anything on. Those and then that—that's where you get. You can publish something at the office if they want to go there and pick up. Yeah. Something there. You can print out something or something upon request. You know that they can do this. It's now, important. So yeah. I would agree with you. Yes. Okay. So that's. Connie, how about you? Can, she... <laughs> can you hear Connie? No, she's she's talking. She can. Connie, can you hear? We can't hear you. Your audio went off. 
<laughs> Modern technology. Yeah, she was in Dallas calling. Yeah. Going, oh my God, we're stuck here. Can you get your audio working? Okay. I'm going to sit down. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, we just lost her. Sarah Barnett, I've lived in Terry Lake for 22 years, and I have questions for all three of you. You can just jump in and answer three. if you at will, whoever wants to go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Do you oh, want to respond back. to her question before I start my questions? Did you hear the question before the, the last person was asking about, oh, can, about communication? Can you hear me, Susie? Yeah, can you hear us? <clears throat> Did you hear the last question? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh. I, I was going to ask. I, not the, the not not the last one, but I wanted to direct it to Sharon, if that's okay. Sharon, no. Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sharon, that I missed your question, but I wanted to ask. You know, I I, I believe that there's a lot of talent and expertise in our community. Would you be willing to add something like that up? <laughs> I know my mouth gets me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> we may talk but, about I mean, that. You, you would be willing to have something like that up, or at least have a segue where we can get something like that done, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I say I've offered my time and effort whenever needed. So. Uh, okay, see, that's perfect, because you, you, have, you have the capacity to do that and to help. And I think that that's really important. And also, I think, you know, having real questions answered in board meetings instead of, you know, closing them real, real quick, I think that would actually help solve a lot of problems as well. So there's my answer, and I'm sorry it took so long to, to get back to you. Thank you. Can I ask just one quick okay. question? She just reminded me. Of, okay. <laughs> this is capacity. Does everybody, uh, are all of you retired or you're still working? Who, who all is still working? Okay, I'm working? retired. Okay, you're retired. You're re I don't know about that. Yes. Okay, okay. so time-wise, and you all live full-time here in TVL, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, all right. That, that's just, I just wanted, was curious about that. For capacity. Yeah, yeah I, think that, I think that's important. If you're going to uh, volunteer for a position like this, I think you need to have adequate time to face the, the problems head on. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Hi, Connie. My name's Sarah, and I've lived Hi. in the community for 22 years. And Sarah? My co yes. And my question okay. is, number one, is code enforcement. Our police officers do an excellent job. I, I do not want to get rid of the police department, by the way. Just okay. that said. But we also need more help with one per code enforcer. That's just not plausible for 2,600 okay. people. He, one I person can't be in, on every road out here to enforce the rules and regulations. That said, my question yeah. is, is once we know that the person is a problem and it continues and that code enforcement has done no, no good, uh, fines have done no good, collecting on them fines have no good, you put a lien on the property, will there ever be a judgment to make someone clean up their yard, for example? Can we physically yeah, I, get I something done to where we have more say in what our, our more power in what we do to get them to do things. I absolutely think you can do that. I mean, in our rules and regulations, they can be enforced. Uh, maybe some things need to be changed as well in the rules and regulations to accomplish that. But, you know, if you assess fines on someone and they're not paying them, you know, maybe not just a judgment, but if it gets over a certain you know, monetary sum, we can actually go ahead and start a repossession process on that if it gets that bad. Okay. I mean, if it, if it gets that bad. <clears throat> I, I think, think that I'd have to you revert. Just that thing so long for 10 years. I think I'd have to refer to the current board what the process is, what the bylaws say, how you can do that. Because you get a very sticky wicket 
of repossession of somebody's home, enforcing fines. I do agree with you. I think I think the biggest issue I would say is personal responsibility. I, you know, we can have all the code enforcement we want, but if you don't take personal responsibility for your own locations, uh, for your own property, my question is, is, what about the people, the people that don't have personal? I know. I think we need to revert to the board and see what see what the bylaws are because we're not on the board yet. We don't know what the official official rules are, what the bylaws say we can do. It's it's pretty big. I could see us racking up huge legal fees trying to do some of this. I'm not saying we shouldn't do anything, but we do need to figure out a plan, figure out what the current okay, board has Okay, my next question is, my ne I, I didn't mean to ignore you, but I saw you shaking your head yes, so you have to kind of, kind of answer my question. My next question is, is... Once we re racked up the financial things of people paying their assessments that have to live next to these people that aren't personally responsible, how is that fair to us? Right. Yeah, I don't think I don't it's think it fair. is. Go ahead. Sorry, it's, sorry. it's not fair. Um, part of the private community and not having the city ordinances behind us is a problem. Exactly, and that's um, where we get into line where it it's, it's almost like we're considered. Uh, snowflakes defund the police officers because we talk about we want more enforcement that has nothing to do with it it has to do with the fact that we want things that they can't enforce to be enforced and and um, I, I'm not sure what the answer is but it would be a great research project okay <laughs> next question. We, need, we need to do something though sir and I agree with you because it's an issue for all our property property values uh, when people aren't taking care of their uh, uh, of their property, they go down and it'll go down quickly. And next thing you know, will be Goose Creek. No offense to Goose Creek. <laughs> my, my next question is: Is you touched you touched base a little bit about uh, improving the front entrance? We touched you touched base a while ago talking about uh, improving the front entrance, siding the and the gatehouse and, and improvements. But I'm more worried about the improving the areas that are so <laughs> neglected and derelict that than just the front entrance. You know, you could put lipstick on a pig all day long, but it's still a pig. And if you drive past the front gate and you drive down our, through our beautiful community and you make a right and you see a yellow barricade and then you see a bunch of derelict trailers, yeah. that's a problem. Because it, 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 it reflects on everybody in this community, looks at everybody in that mobile home park as derelict trailers. And that's not true. There's 131 residents there that, that start every day to, to maintain. Yeah, I don't think anybody disagrees with you on that on Saturday. The, the front entrance was just a first point. Every every area should we should keep up. And I would say Iggy and the rest of the crew's done a good job. I'm not sure if we talked about it on Facebook, why that barricade was put there by the ball fields, but I'm assuming it's to prevent, prevent a thoroughfare there so when kids are yeah, playing I there. Think it's, I mean, there's know. a, I actually did drive by the other day, and I, from looking at it, there's a path for people to walk. I think the point is they didn't want people driving from that. Why, <laughs> why just that spot and not every other place where children walk by? They don't put barricades on our dams. That we were told, we have been told so many different scenarios that that barricade was there. The truth is, it was it was placed to cut down. I'm speaking as an insurance person now. <laughs> I think it's the way it comes through. But it, seeing that car there would, to me would be unexpected for it to to, to come through to the parking lot. Um, it becomes a natural cut through to go up to the it's a natural to the gas station. Yeah. It's an actual road that they put a barricade on. If you look at on Google, my, any map that I've ever gotten from Lori, any Google maps, everything, well, it, it is a road, and they shut down a road. They shut I, down a public road. It, it may be a road. It may be a road, although right now it doesn't look like a much of a road. But it is an in, a misplaced. Road. If you don't want the barricade, take it out. I, mean, I, I, I think it's. If, if, you're community, if you're in your community, if you're in your area, you don't want that barricade. No. I'm sorry, Connie. Connie? I said if your, community, if your community does not want that barricade, then it should be removed. And the other thing is, is I don't know what type of financial situation some of these people are in, but, you know, maybe we could set up something like we did at the pavilion, and we can do, like, a little improvement of the area. There's a lot of people in the community that want to help, you know, just like we did at the pavilion. So 
I mean, if people are, don't have the capacity to fix up their own property or can't cut their own grass, I'm sure that we can get some other people that, that could pitch in and maybe clean up some areas. I don't know, it's just a thought, so. I like that, I was thinking outside the box. considered a health risk? I'm sorry? Uh, like a can you hear me? Like, yes. Yes. Rats or mice or vermin of any sort. I mean, I would think that might be an approach if, if they're bringing, if they're harboring unwanted animal. I think I agree to... something needs to be done, sir. I don't think anybody disagrees that that people that aren't maintaining their house in a, in a reasonable manner, something should be done. I think we need to follow up. I don't think anybody disagrees with that uh, with that assessment. Okay, and one more question. Connie, you mentioned something about a public vote when it pertained to the police department. Uh, what's, your right. what's your philosophy on, on more things being covered? brought to a public vote I because it is the public it's impact. all of us i think anything that has a major impact on our community definitely needs to be discussed with the community okay thanks guys thank you Oops. My name is Carol Gilmer. I've lived here 43 years. Um, this question is for all of you. Do any of you have a financial interest or do business with any of the current board members? No. 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 None at all? None. Okay, I know that Mr. Turnbull does because he has Dwayne do basements for him. Um, and if this is the case, would you not feel that that is a conflict of interest when you go to vote? No. Would you think that that? Yes. You don't think that's a conflict? I think we're in such a small yeah. community and you help each other out. No, if, no that's if, not help. I'm talking Jer right now. If Jeremy is doing that's something, I'm if Jeremy is answer. doing something, let's say he's building a, building a house and he hires Dwayne who's part of the community to do the excavation yeah. there or hires Rob Young who's part of the community to do, um, something there why why is that a kind we're keeping that money in the community and right. everybody's that's got nothing everybody. to do with what i asked yeah, i don't think it's a conflict of interest with the board um, i think board, it's been proven at times that it has been a I conflict do. of interest that's why we're looking forward so do that. You? i i don't what would be what would be an example because if this person hires this person and they are on the same board and they don't agree, but they're afraid that if they vote against what this, the main yeah. person wants them to do, then they're not going to be able to continue that work or yeah. to continue that job. It's possible possible for them to recruit themselves from the vote. If they do recruit themselves. <coughs> I know when Judy Stock was on the board, she recruited herself a lot because it had to do with... Um, permits and um, when they were re uh, permits and how they would go out and um, survey the properties when it had to do with the heavy road trucks going across the roads um, because she would be using the heavy trucks to do work she would recruit herself um, my other question is um, I kind of took offense to when you said the people in power I don't really feel like you are the people in power. I think the community when, should when, be what, in power. What was, that, what was that in reference to? I don't recall that, Carol. You were talking about um, making decisions, and you said, you know, you need to leave it up, do it with the people in power, and I, I don't I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I use that, that, that word in people in power, because that does, yeah, I agree, I, that sounds, I wrote, I wrote that sounds, a, sound a, sounds elitist. But part of the reason why communities like ours have boards is to is to make you they're elected we're elected officials here to make decisions because if you had all 2500 residents just making voting on everything you'd never get anything you'd never get anything done so i work i still work in corporate america we still have committees that that develop ideas develop programs and then they're presented 
uh, the different folks to make decisions. If I use the word position of power, um, it was a misnomer. I didn't mean to, mean to do that. What I say is the board is elected to make decisions on behalf of the community. If the community doesn't like the board, they can absolutely vote them out, right? Yeah, but you only get to do that every so often. Um, my next question right. is... Well, that's, what, that's, about, that's, like, that's like everything. Well, my next question is you talked about being um, the transparency, um, sharing information. What if you can't get that information I'm to share? Right. What if you can't get that information to share? Well, I'm pretty sure. I'll let you know. <laughs> huh? I uh, said I'd let you know. Yeah. And I then mean, we take you some can sort ask, of action to get it. You can ask, and if it's not given to you, how are you no. going to share it? How are you going to go about getting it if it's not given well, to you? Well, first of all, I'd have to if go I couldn't, the system myself, if it wasn't I'll available, I would let everyone know why it wasn't available, and then I would make sure to give you reasonable answers why, and then I would make sure that we would get it the very next time. We can't have what's been going on in the past continue on, that's for sure. I mean, if I have to, I, I can look at reports, I, mean, I can look at the system, I can figure out, you know, what's, what's going on. Okay. I, you know, anybody with some tech savvy should be able to monitor to some okay. extent. Good answer. Thank you. Hey, Jay, can you answer that too, please? How, how are you going to obtain information that isn't available? So that's a good, that's a good question, Sarah. Thanks. It's, um, what, what I've seen here in my two years living here, um, and everybody think, oh, that's not, that's not a long time. That's why I think I bring a breath of fresh air to a community um, that's a little bit bogged down in the, uh, in, in the past. And what you do is we need to understand what systems are in place currently. And I think the current board is doing a good job of being transparent. I have particularly went up to the board, I mean up to the association, and asked Lori for specific items that people, people say they can't get. Every time I've gone up there and I've been able to get that information. If something's not available, as, as both Connie and Sue said, we need to figure out why it's not available and make it available. That's part of the that's part of the process as we evolve as a board and as an association. Hey, you know, we, 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 we might have lost. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, sorry, Jay, but I think everybody knows. Do we time out? Drop off? I think it'll, it'll, it'll evolve. So we got we got to kind of look at where the where the gaps are. Um, and again, as a, as a total board, and identify those gaps and figure out a fix fix together. I know we're running as individuals, but the board is seven folks that have to work together for the best, what's best for the uh, community. And I think we will, uh, we will do that going forward. I'm pleased with where TDL has evolved over the last, last two years that I've lived here, and I've seen it the 10 years I've been coming out here. It's a lot different than it was uh, just, a, just a couple of years ago. Yes, it is. Hi there, I apologize, I've been taking notes. Um, my name's Sarah Manschultz, I'm a new resident down here. Um, I am Welcome. a week order, weekender right now, but my husband seems to be spending more time down here than at home. <laughs> uh, been coming down here for a decade with friends and family as well. Um, one just note in general, there was a question that was asked about employment status, who's retired, who's working. And uh, I know personally my retired parents, my in-laws, aunts, uncles, friends, family, all tell me about how they're much more busy in retirement <laughs> and don't know how they ever did it. So I would just urge that nobody make a decision on the bias related to whether time and effort will be put forth at the same level by somebody who has a full-time job, a part-time job, two jobs, three jobs, or is retired. It really comes down to the candidates and caring about the community. Okay, so pass that. Um, questions. Connie mentioned earlier her financial acumen based on her employment background and where she's been. Oh, well, Oh, the good thing is this question's really directed for you two. Uh, 
So we know that she's got an accounting background. Sue, you mentioned um, the work you were in and having analytical and financial reporting skills, project management. Can you each tell us a little bit more about, give an example of budgeting or long-term capital planning or project management or team building that you mentioned? My job was not financial other than trying to not keep the insurance company from going broke. That was, that was much enough. Um, I have a minor in math. I'm good with numbers. I know when numbers don't add up. And, um, you know, I think, for one thing, when you come in as a new person, there's a lot to learn, there's going to be a lot of questions, and it may be questions that haven't been answered before, or brought up before. So, um, newbie ignorance could be a benefit. <laughs> um, but I think, um, you know, you're reviewing, I've looked at some of the financial statements that I have been able to see, and there are some questions. I don't want to bring them up now because I don't know the details. I don't know, you know, the background. Um, but I'm, I, I'm good with numbers, and I'm good with projects, and um, I'm good at analyzing stuff. Thank you. Jay? So first off, I do want to say, say that I am, I am still working. I think that gives me distinct benefit. I'm up to speed on the current technologies, the current, the, the current technologies, the current systems in place, uh, and you still got that drive when you're working um, to kind of keep, pu keep pushing forward. Um, my background in the commercial real estate industry, as I said earlier, gives me a unique perspective. I spent most of my career working with corporate clients managing their real estate spend. That's their leases, how they manage their facilities, um, multi-million multi dollar budgets for companies like Sara Lee, Google, Facebook, US Bank, uh, Humana, Haynes Brands. Um, and my current job, um, we look at each one of these companies' budgets. Their number one expense of a corporation outside of people is real estate. We look at their budgets, very detailed, and figure out how do, how do we manage those budgets, how do we save them money on those budgets, and still improve, improve services. I do that every day for corporations. Um, you know, again, multi-million dollar budget, so I'm up to speed on all the, you know, Yardy, SAP, all the enterprise, Oracle, all the enterprise software system. I'm an Excel master, so I understand how to manipulate uh, worksheets, look at the data, and then not only look at the data, but provide the results after that. Can you clarify what you mean by manipulate? Just so people don't take that word <laughs> wrong, because I don't want anybody to walk away with that. That's a good, that's good, that's good, yeah. I don't like, like, uh, like uh, she got me on power on power. Uh, it's really looking, looking at the data and what does the data mean and what can we use with, use with that data? And Connie brought up uh, uh, detailed uh, financials. There needs to be some, some detail uh, into that. But this is a, uh, the Terralife budget is about $1.8 million. Uh, that's usually a rounding error in a lot of stuff I'm, uh, I'm work, working on. Uh, but I think it's important and we need to understand that detail. And I do that every day so I can look at a spreadsheet, look at a, a p and L, um, and and you know, manage that. Okay. Thank you. Um, should we bring the phone over here so that she can hear, well, I, I put it in the middle? Okay. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, so I'm not going to be able to ask this one as succinctly. Um, I'm trying to still gather my thoughts. Connie mentioned that it should be up to the residents to decide on, on different items. And you know, she mentioned it with Sarah on the barricade. If, if your community doesn't like it, take it down. Typically, I think Jay uh, mentioned before, a board in a community like this or a city municipality um, or our United States government is elected. People listen to the candidates' platforms. They <coughs> vote for like-minded individuals or as many, you know, there might not always be a perfect fit, but check the most boxes. And that government is entrusted for that term to make the hard decisions. 
why is that different here? And does the current association indentures, um, rules and regulations, whatever they're called here, allow for there to be public votes on the police versus security, et cetera? Um, and, and I know you guys not be, might not be able to answer that question, but why is it different? Why does it need to be different here other than you guys explaining to everybody what your platforms are and the residents vote and we efficiently get things done? I don't know who wants to start. Well, there's some things, for instance, the whole police situation was not a matter of choice. It had happened. to happen. You know, it, it had to happen. Um, the, the only thing I can think of, if, if you know, if we had a, an amenity that the board decided to get rid of, then I think before we, we do that, it should come to a vote. If it's a matter of budgeting, we don't have, we can't support whatever that is anymore, we'll have to make our case. So is it a special election, County and Sue, I, and that you're thinking? It would be an informal election, I guess, because I'm not sure what our what our parameters are like that, but at least you'd know what people were thinking. <coughs> what I, you were I, to do. I think it's important, maybe not. it's not a general election, but having folks come to the board meetings, ask questions, ask questions on the, on the site that we, that, that we talked about, to make sure they're engaged. Like I said earlier, this is five, 10 times more people than just a typical uh, board meeting. Come to the board meeting, get your views out there so the board can react to that. I don't want to operate in a vacuum. I want to operate as, a, as an extension of the, of the community, what's best for the community. And I've met a lot of people in this room just being out and about uh, on the golf cart to see what people, uh, people think. And, uh, and I think that, and I bring those back because I'm going to have a different view maybe than the, than the community. And then let's, let's listen to the community but doing a full vote. It's probably going to bog down, bog yeah. down things. Connie, can you hear me? I'm not sure she's there. Are you there, Connie? I can hear. Yeah, you. I, I, I can hear, but <laughs> I can't hear the question. Okay. Uh, this is Sarah. I've got the phone. The question that I brought up was, um, Jay says he's passionate about the the whole police stance. It seems like you're pretty passionate about the residents having a voice and whether it's police, et cetera, that there might be the opportunity for another vote, a special vote, um, some sort of polling, et cetera. Give me right. an example of how you see that, when and how you see that working and being affected if you are elected. Okay. So if it is something that definitely impacts the community as far as safety goes, I definitely think the community needs to have a say in, in what what direction we need to go. So if it turns out that, you know, we look at the mileage of the police department and see, you know, that they're really not patrolling much and we could get better with, say, having six code enforcement and two police officers, I think that the people need to decide whether or not that's the action that they want to take instead of a board just deciding, hey, this is what we're doing. I don't think that anybody should blindly just determine for the community what is best for them. I don't care if it's 600 or 2,600 people. That's a big decision to make, just as it is with the fire department. So if it, it's a huge decision like that to see what the people want, that's that's where I'm going with. Not not smaller things like should we take you know 500 out of the budget or 5,000 out of the budget. I'm talking about real decisions that impact the entire community. Okay. I appreciate that. And it's just a follow up. Um, I mentioned earlier the example that you gave to Sarah Barnett about if your community doesn't like the barricade, just go take it down. I'm no, that's not what I said. I said if your community doesn't like it, then it should be removed. <laughs> Did she not say not take it down? <laughs> okay, I just wanted to clarify because I specifically again typed what I heard and I was assuming that's not what you were meaning exactly like that okay. but i wanted to clarify it because the last thing i right. want to see around here is everybody just taking things into their own hands no that's not what i said that's not what i said okay. at all perfect thank you for clarifying uh -huh. anyone else 
on. We're, lo we're losing the crowd. What? What? I know we all talk about the future and, and trying to improve Terrigalac, which is, I believe is a great place. I want to know how you can save money for all those people and move forward at the same time. I think that we're spending money unnecessarily for a few things, and I would like your view on how we can I, save money. I 100% agree with you there. So, if, if I can go here, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, for, first of all, the budget, uh, that is a big, big deal. It's, it, but it's a guideline only. That, that is not etched in stone. So, in my opinion, I would really like to review the budget and see the, where the wasteful spending is. I know that we can make some differences with, say, let's take, for example, the phone phone and internet. It's a small, small step there, but I know we're overpaying on that. If anybody's ever had phone and internet, you know that you can renegotiate those contracts with Charter. I mean, even though that's a small step, that's just a beginning point. There's lots of areas where we're over budget that needs to be cut out. So without losing any service or, or any sort of safety at all, I know that we're overspending on it. But I'd really have to delve into that budget to see where it is we're going. I know there's a lot of wasteful spending, and I, I would like to cut that out. So I can't tell you exactly every specific category where, where it's happening, but I, I will tell you one thing. Anything that's over budget must stop. And I know okay. another point, so. Okay. You got any uh, you? What what were your concerns about the budget? You said there was overspending. Do you have some specific there's examples you're worried spending. about? In my view, there's unnecessary spending. These roads have been out here for 50 years. I think they're compacted enough to where we don't have to constantly put rock and gravel on them all the time. But there is maintenance on them, I agree. Uh, and as far as other stuff that's not getting done is affecting a domino effect, you know. So you, you you don't you don't you don't think we should maintain the rock roads? No, I think we need to do something else to them instead of uh, continue putting rock on them. That is just a waste of money. Mm -hmm. In my yeah, what I, what I'm pleased to see is the long term. Okay, so what happened to the chip and seal? I'd like to know. There. I don't know what happened to that, but they were talking about that a, a year and a half ago. I'd like to know what happened to that proposition. Well, I think we just need to think outside the box, do something different. I know the maintenance does a fine job. I don't have any problem with that. I'm just saying that we're spending money to where I think we could do something different. You know, instead of putting rock on there, put sand on it or something, you know, or a different kind of a rock that's not... Uh, like the blue rock, maybe? The blue I know rock they're, I knew they're doing some good, different things with rock. And Joe, I know Dottie, on your, your thoroughfare there on, on Rue Marseille, they did a different type of rock rock there to help keep the, keep the dust down. So some of, that's, some of that's being done. And I think maintaining the road, especially if you're on a gravel road, you want that maintained. You, you, maintain, you want that uh, yeah, gravel. I don't, I'm not sure there's, a, if there's other examples of overspending. I think it's something we should look, we should look at as Connie. As Connie said, is there's other ways to do things, right. but some of the some of the infrastructure items I think are, are areas we should probably spend more on uh, to ma maintain. You know what? You want bad roads when a company comes out, or I think this paving project that's going on, well, on now people, is people uh, that is are great. coming in here to buy a house or something. Okay, well, they're not going to like all them gravel roads and stuff. Great, you know? I'm just really saying that we do something so different. Are we going to be able to proceed down that path? I think I think going into debt with the cost of money these days and what you can take with the, with the money you have in the bank and make X 
X percent and borrowing money is so, is so cheap. I think that was probably a, a great financial decision. And I know they bought the asphalt as a commodity at, I don't know what the, what the cost, but I think it was 10X of what it would cost at a retail price. That was probably one of the most prudent financial decisions that Terrible Acts made in the last 30 years. Hold on a second. If you're saying that we had $1.6 million in the bank and we're going to half a percent on it, you're saying it's prudent to borrow a half a million dollars at three and a half percent? I disagree. Yeah, well, we, we can we can we can agree to disagree, but that, but you see, corporations don't use their cash to go out and fund capital uh, capital capital projects. They had to buy it immediately. You didn't lose all the cash. You have cash in the okay. bank to help support support different things. I don't know all the details, Connie. I don't want to argue with about yeah. it, but I, I think yeah. buy, borrowing yeah. money uh, for for a good use is uh, is prudent. Yeah, not when yeah. you have it in the bank. I disagree. Yeah, well, that's that's uh, you don't you don't use your cash for stuff like that. And asphalt, look at the cost of inflation. Uh, and I'd, I'd hate to buy asphalt today at a uh, at a retail uh, retail price. Again, I got a construction background also, so that's something that all the companies I've worked for, we always um, financed our capital. We didn't use our own cash. Okay, but this is a smaller smaller community. I know. I've I've lived in small small communities my whole life to work on small jobs. So, right. are there any other questions? I know we're really running long on time. If you don't mind, I was taking trouble. Good to see a lot of you guys. Oh, sorry. I just saw it winding on. So. Um, trying to figure out how to put this. Uh, in response to the uh, young lady who said something about the barrier, my property backs up to that field. And originally why it was put up there, I do not know. I can tell you why it needs to be up there. And before things like that are changed, that the board needs to talk to the people that live there because I have had to call the police numerous times because of what is going on back there. A good place for one thing, uh, drugs. So you make two exits to that place, that'd be a big mistake, a very big mistake. So, and the other thing that I've always felt, the, uh, the playground was taken down in front. That's the best place if you're considering putting up another playground in the front, is right there. That's the best place for it. So um, I guess what I'm saying is that when things are like that are discussed, please, please, please don't go off, you know, and do something like this. That is something that needs to be discussed with the property owners. I agree with you 100%, and that's a, that's a nice part. And if you grab one of my position papers on the way out, way out that's one of the things I think we should develop that even more. Um, Playground equipment, really make it a good soccer field, softball, kickball field, and have more uh, more events. As Terrible X starts turning over, you're seeing a younger uh, a younger demographic, and I'd love for that park to be used used more. I, I've been over there every day this week, walking my dog and just kind of scoping it out. And it's a uh, it could be a really nice area. And I agree. We don't want to make it a thoroughfare no. uh, back and forth. No, please, a please. To do what? The mobile home park. No, no, no. There's a road. Then it goes straight to the mobile home park. There's a road that outlines that. You would come from the mobile, no, you can just cut through there. The mobile home, that, that barricade being there is an isolation from the rest of the community on that side. Why? Because it wasn't there when, when we bought our homes there, and they put it up to, to not make it a thoroughfare. It has always been a thoroughfare until the last five or six years they, they put it up. Oh, no, 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 no. I've been there since 2007. 
2007. But, but, it, but the truth is, is right. there's been four accidents that I know of uh, in that spot in the last two years. Four accidents. If the boulders and the barricade weren't there, the accidents wouldn't have happened. Why is that, Sarah? Because they take that curve right there so fast that they're hitting that barricade. There's a <laughs> yeah, reason to have the barricade up. There's a reason to have the barricade up. So, so are we going to barricade the dams and stuff for people that have speed through them? I mean, it, it, the dams aren't right. parks. The dams yeah. are thoroughfares around the entire right. around the entire lake. But this That's is a what I'm talking about. That has always been a thoroughfare until they put the black barricade up. And here's when it comes to something that. like this, this is what it needs to be discussed. Yeah, this is what needs to be discussed. We're going to have to get through everybody. We're going to behind us. Thank you. I, I, um, my name is Mike Tilly, and I just have a couple questions. One is, uh, Connie, you can hear me okay? Yes. Okay. One of my questions for you is, um, you know, hearing the discussions about the police department, and, and that's, a, that's a big important thing for me and in, in the, uh, the community, as well as my property values and having that protection. I would like to know what kind of reassurances that you can have and give to me and give to all the, the people listening tonight um, how you can uh, potentially unbiasedly uh, give those uh, opinions and things knowing that there was a lawsuit, federal lawsuit against oh. our, our police department. Yeah, the very lawsuit that you started, which is the reason why we oh. had to to do that, Mike, and you're, you're fully aware of that. I didn't and start it. I'm just asking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, Mike, I, I'm really not going to get into that with you because technically it is because of your lawsuit that it started. We were wronged, and you know what? I'm going to stand up for my rights just like I'd stand up for the rights of everybody else in this community. So. Okay. Um, Jay, my question one was for you is you mentioned um, basically kind of reciting potentially the front office and, and other or, or the the guard house and so forth and doing some things. Um, are those other uh, infrastructure important pieces as well within the community? I mean, we got a lot of buildings and I mean, my question kind of spreading that out or uh, yeah, you also. Yeah. As, I, as, I, as I mentioned, this, sir, that's, that's just one of the things I think is, you know, it's top of mind because it's the first thing you see when you come in, come in the community. But I think we ought to develop a, again, a short and long-term capital plan for all the aspects of TDL, not just not just the front entrance, and then prioritize those, put costs attached to them, and then you know I'd love I'd love to see the you know the Mike Baylor Memorial uh, Guard Shack up front, you know, having people people in, that want to help in the community be a, be part of be part of. A, Part of that, not just the front, but again the entire uh, entire Terrellac community, because again it's signage, it's guard houses, it's information centers around the lakes, around the fish, things like that. So not not just the front end. That's just something I, I see every day. I'm like, well, yeah. be nice if we did something cool here and okay, know, we got the community involved. Fair, fair enough. That's all I have. Thanks, Mike. I'm not dead yet. And, you know, I got, like, I got like 10 years left. 10 years in, 10 years left. I still go by so much in and so much out on retirement with a contract company. I only have one question for y'all because I've been here for a minute and it's all about people. But every time We get ready for election time. It's all about the money. Where's the money going? What's the money doing? I have seen more action out of this current board than I have seen in a long time. And because of the positivity, the great things that are being done, I've seen more roads being paved. I've seen people getting their questions answered. And I'm not talking about 
the stuff that is going to take a minute to fix. But I've seen a lot of things being accomplished. And I want to say thank you to the current board for that. And I want to say thank you to the office staff. And a lot of times they all get left out. I have one question as a business owner at the front gate. It's not about the money. It's about the people. Don't worry about where your money's going because we're all bringing them in. And they're staying. And they're not weekenders anymore, Susie. They're not weekenders. They're not people that show up two or three times a year. These are folks that are staying down here year long. 99% of your job being on the board is speaking to people. What do you have to say that is positive to the people that are coming in? Not to the people that are here who are fighting this battle. Whatever they all have going on and all questions we have. What's the positive thing that you want to say to the folks that are coming in? And don't tell them you're going to put a memorial to whoever. Because again, I'm not dead yet. Now speak. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I, I, I will agree with you that the board, uh, the, the current board is doing a good job, good job. I was asked to run last year, and I'm like, I'm not sure I'm ready. I'm not sure I understand enough about the community. I've seen such positive changes in this community. Um, I've had friends move in this community. I moved down here as a weekender and stayed. I'm down here, I'm down here, down here full time because I love this community. I'm out every day. You see my signs out there. I have over 100 signs in the community down here. How did they get out there? Because I'm talking to the people. What do you want to see? What do you, what do you want? Developing friendships. That's why I stay down here, because it, it, just, it just becomes a community, a friendship um, that, I, that I've gathered here. I lived, you know, when I lived uh, up in St. Louis County, in the same neighbors for 26 years. I have more friends down here in two years um, by tenfold, tenfold, what I can call good friends and part of the part of the community. I would tell people moving in here, it's really a community that's thriving and moving forward, um, regardless of what, what you read on Nextdoor or Facebook. It's really, there's some positive momentum. We're turning the corner. It's one of the reasons I want to join the board to make sure we turn the right, turn the right corner and continue to build on a, on a 50 year plus track record of, uh, of terror lock. People come down here and it's a hidden gem. They don't, they don't, they didn't realize it was uh, here. Our friends come down to visit, to use the lakes and stuff like that. And it, again, it's a, it's a hidden gem. So that's what I would say. See you next. I think um, the people are the, the best part about Tertilac. I mean, it's beautiful and we have lots of lakes and we have a golf course and, you know, there's, you can be as busy as you want to be or you can just be in your house and enjoy the outdoors. Um, but it's the people. It is the people. And if you, it's easy to connect with people here. I don't know. I moved down here and I didn't know anybody. And it's just easy to connect with people. I'm not sure why, but um, and people we people do care when when something happens. Somebody needs something. Somebody steps up. I mean, you know, it, and it, I don't think I I grew up in a small town, and it reminds me of my small town that um, you know people care and they love it here and they want it to be the best it can be. It's Hometown USA. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I also agree that people are the best in Turtle Act. We have a lot of great people in there, but I do disagree. It is about the money, and you need to know where your money's going. So I disagree with the fact that don't talk about the money. No, we need to talk about the money. Thanks, Connie. Deb? My name is Deb Thacker. I'm the current vice president of this board, and this is my second year. And I'm going to put you on the spot, all three of you, while I have you here. I'm going to put Jeremy on the spot, too. I want a guaranteed commitment from whoever wins the two spots on the position that you will do your darndest to do your part. I have never worked so hard in a volunteer <laughs> position in my entire life. <laughs> Wayne has never worked so hard. 
I think I know Dwayne oh. more than I know Melissa. I we talk like three, four, seven times a day <laughs> on issues every day. So I need a commitment from the three of you that are here that if you get elected, you will be willing to take on projects. You will be willing to talk to the people. You will be willing to send email messages, not just three or four of us. It doesn't matter what day. And I know you work and I'm okay with that. I mean, I have another job, so to speak, as a CASA and so I run myself ragged, but I love this community. Well, and I, I, do I will too. do what it takes to get things done. I'm, I'm committed to it. One of the reasons I have more signs out there than anybody, I have put heart and soul. I'm out in this lake community every day um, talking talking to folks. That's my commitment. I want it, I will commit to this. If I wasn't going to uh, commit 110%, then I wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have, have accepted the, uh, the, the nomination. But I think what I'm doing now to get elected shows my my uh, passion, passion for this, and my commitment to the uh, community, and that will be long term. I'm not just looking for three years, six years, ten years. Let's. Uh, I, I want to be part of this community long term, and you have my word that I will. Uh, that I will give that commitment. All right. Well, I'm not doing signs, <laughs> <laughs> but I have. A, I am committed to the community, and I have volunteered my entire life, whether I was working or not working or retired or whatever, I've been a volunteer forever. Um, and I'm out, you know, I, I'm out to see people and I think, people, I think I'm approachable. I think people can talk to me. I think um, I can find out what well, I'm going to hold you to it. It's recorded. So whichever one of you win, <laughs> Dwayne, remember that. Clay, remember that. So, well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.